In the next year, I couldn't, I, I'd say we're in, we're in the midst of this transition into economic capital, which is the, to me the key thing that is going across uh, the life insurance industry from, from my perspective at this point in time. We're not done yet. We, we still have a long way to go. We have to build tools that can not only calculate economic capital, but uh, do it on time frames that are uh, reasonable for financial reporting. We're seeing a trend in dynamically modeling uh, our business and I believe that's going to continue and take hold in a big way in the near future. We're not as far along as I'd like to see us, but I believe the dynamic financial modeling of an insurance or another financial services uh, entity is going to be where it's going to be in the near future. There's really no telling what's going to happen in the investment landscape in the next few years. Um, I think it's going to be very volatile. It's going to be very interesting and you know the actuaries who currently work in investment banks and in financial services are going to see lots and lots of changes. A lot has been developed, the springboard of what's been done in banking, uh, understanding of market risk, understanding of, of uh, investment risk, understanding of the actuarial and, and the insurance risk, that's there. But now we're trying to get our hands around things like operational risk and when you ask people to define operational risk, they'll mention the others and say this is everything else. And so the question is, how do we get our hands around these? And there are, it's just a, a, a very daunting uh, a problem is what are all these risks and how do we measure them and control them and, and uh, put them into the total risk management process so we can truly be an enterprise risk management process. I think the biggest trends are likely uh, a combination of, of more regulation in some of the financial services areas. I think in the accounting area, we're looking at probably it's at less regulation in terms of valuation requirements. And I would expect overall that we would continue to see more consolidation in the industry. Most of the work I do is work either for life insurance companies who are clients or in one way or another in the environment that surrounds life insurance companies. Given that the focus of insurance products from the buyer's point of view is increasingly on risk management and risk avoidance for the buyer. That means that the people who design those products and who design the ways in which those products will be managed have to think more and more about risk management. And that is a trend that we have already, but it's getting stronger with each passing month and that will continue. I suspect that we're going, that actuaries are going to not just be doing traditional actuarial work as we have in the past. We're already expanding into new um, new opportunities, but I think that that is going to take off. I think you're going to see a convergence of how the insurance company looks at performance with the way other financial institutions look at performance. And the concept that insurance is a separate from any other financial instruments, I think that's going to go away. And we're going to get to a holistic look at, at cash flows that are based on a consistent set of principles regardless of whether the underlying wrapper is insurance, investment, or some other type of cash flow. The, the actuary's role will change as a result of what's happening in the investment field, or we expect to happen in the investment field over the years to come, in that, as ever with actuaries, when there are uh, situations where things are uncertain, uh, that clearly then brings about its own opportunities. Health actuaries will no longer just do traditional work. Um, of course they can choose to, but they will, I think they will get into more the political environment and influence policy. In the next year, the next five years, what we're just going to see in the life insurance industry is a greater uh, confluence between capital markets type activity and kind of retail sale of financial products. And what the actuaries are doing in, in the investment area right now is designing products that were once only accessible to sophisticated financial institutions and bringing them down to size and available for a retail sale to mom and pop policyholders. I think the uh, uh, biggest trends in the uh, major life insurance companies are to uh, be sure that they are innovative in their products and have the same kind of energy and creativity that the major investment banks and the major brokerage firms have. We've got to get that communication out there. That enterprise risk management is a value creation, and it is, it is a tool for value creation at corporations and other entities, as opposed to a compliance-oriented model where you're checking off boxes and 
and uh, you're complying to regulation. It is truly should be part of a corporate culture and I think a section is going to be truly involved in getting that environment across. Thank you.